For a year around 2016, the Marshall London was my main smartphone. Around three years ago, twin front-facing speakers that had genuine volume and fidelity for those YouTube and gaming sessions and odd moments in the car or sat down to relax in the summer house, that sort of thing. Love them. And twin 3.5 mil jacks. I never used both at the same time. There's a device allowed, even encouraged it. Plus stereo audio recording was stunning. Not something that was a given anywhere else in the phone world apart from the Lumias uh, in 2015 when the London launched. The rest of the phone was very underwhelming, of course. Low end process, only two gig of RAM, 720p LCD screen. This was 2016, but even so it was low end. Rather poor camera, but I stuck with the Marshall London for its speakers, its strong suit, and the diminutive size with grippy exterior that never needed a case, but it was so easy to pocket. Fast forward to 2019 though, and as I explained on PSC many times, a Snapdragon 410 and 2 gig of RAM just doesn't cut it for modern larger Android applications, not to mention that the OS is stuck on, wait for it, Android 5. And there are no biometrics, it's down to gestures, pins and passwords to get anything done, just unusable to any serious degree. But wait! There's an almost modern equivalent to the Marshall London, and I've never covered it here on the phone show. The speakers are just as loud and arguably with similar fidelity. I'll demo them in a moment. And every other specification is flagship level for 2018, 2019, right up to the Snapdragon 845 and 8 gig of RAM. And it's now available for not 800 pounds, it's original RRP, but 400 pounds, brand new. Currently out of stock on Razer.com, but available from other outlets. This is the Razer Phone 2, and it's rather good. Now, the original Razer Phone here debuted at the end of 2017, and I covered it in Phone Show 329. Huge and black with speakers that were decent, but a little tinny, pitched by Razer as a gaming phone, of course, with a QHD LCD screen at 120 hertz refresh rate, but not much in the way of brightness, you can probably tell here, plus an uninspiring dual camera system. It's worth considering if you're a gamer, but so many specification holes compared to the flagships of the day, the Note 8, the Galaxy S8 principally. However, the £400 now Razer Phone 2 fixed almost all of that. The high spec internals are now backed up by a much brighter screen, though still LCD, fast up to 15 watt Qi wireless charging, IP67 waterproofing and now OIS on the much better main camera. These are some heavyweight improvements on the original plus the loudspeakers are now even louder and richer despite the waterproofing precautions. Here's a demo or two. Okay so this is the Marshall London first 90% volume on all the phones. I don't really want to push it to get any distortion. I want to leave things in the comfort zone at 90% on each. This is Eric Clapton, Joe Bonamassa playing together at the Royal Albert Hall. A nice bit of high volume rock music for bass, percussion and so forth. Here we go. This is the Marshall London. <laughs> There we go. And now this is the Razer Phone 2, same piece of music. <laughs> In summary, the London is punchier and slightly more genuine sub 120Hz bass. But the Razer Phone 2 is overall louder and with a larger sound stage with the Dolby Atmos sensibly on by default. There's just not much between them across all genres. Uh, again, do note that Dolby Atmos on the Razer Phone, Razer Phone 2 and many other smartphones these days is just software enhancement. And if the source is already maxed out in its waveforms, then things can distort. So you have to be uh, prepared to experiment in volume levels, in my experience. It's just nice to have true stereo again after all these phones with mismatched faux stereo pairings. Here we go. If you're watching a film with Dolby Atmos encoding, even enhanced again with a wide stereo stage, it's just very, very impressive. The Razer Phone 2 is now glass-backed and rather slippery. Oh, by the way, here's the aluminium-backed Razer Phone original. 
A uh, clear TPU case is an absolute must here. And a clear because Razer has upgraded the company logo to, wait for it, Chroma Illumination, a bit like the pre-2015 Apple MacBooks with the Apple logo. So with a clear case, you can admire the logo and others can ask, what the flipping heck is that? As with the original Razer, there's a decent capacitive fingerprint scanner built into the right side power button, plus the volume buttons are centralized to help avoid knocks when gaming, apparently. One aspect of phone design, which you just know I'm going to rail against, is that neither the original Razer phone nor the second gen model have the 3.5 mil audio jack. But while this would have been nice, I'm going to forgive Razer here because they went the extra mile and included a 24 bit DAC stroke dongle in the box. 24 bits, high volume, high quality. You see, there are jacks and there are jacks. The Galaxy S series filming this and Note series from Samsung produce OK wired audio output. The LG flagships have a terrific DAC and wired output. But many, many cheaper devices, and I'll use this as my Pixel 3a XL headphone jack, but it's not special. They use the basic DAC, a digital audio converter built into the main chipset and wired audio just isn't loud enough or of high enough quality as a result. So if you're going to get rid of the 3.5 mil jack, then make sure its replacement gives better quality. And the Razer DAC is excellent, bettered only by the Hydis one that I've been mentioning several times before on various channels. Really, really high quality, high fidelity, high volume. The obvious downside is that you can't charge your phone while you listen. Well, actually you can with this tiny mini hub from Zivio. I've also uh, reviewed this on various blogs, just saying, check out the link, USB Type-C and 3.5 mil with a DAC built in. Now, cameras are very important these days. The Razer Phone 2 has a capable, though not very top end setup with a main F over 1.8, 12 megapixel camera with OIS, plus a 12 megapixel two times telephoto lens, albeit with no OIS and only a small aperture. So keep this for sunny days. It's enough though. And Razer's camera application has gotten much better over the last two years. Plus there are several Google camera ports, which work well if you want to play around some more. I've included some of the low light shots here with Google camera and it's night sight. So you can see what good software can do with good to average hardware. Not too shabby for what's supposed to be a media and gaming powerhouse. Video capture is clear enough and with stereo audio, but I'm sorry, Razer, either the video stabilization doesn't work at all or is just terrible. Either way, videos are no go. Here's a demo. Although there's no always on display on the Razer Phone 2 per se, perhaps thanks to an use of an LCD panel, there's a verbosely named third party utility, always on AMOLED with edge lighting, which gives all the capability of always on display for a Samsung Galaxy, for example, and with seemingly trivial battery drain. Software magic, I tell you. The downside and probably why Razer didn't put such a mode in, in out of the box is that at night in the dark, the glow from the backlight rather ruins the effect and contrast. Quirkily but handily, Nova Launcher, which everyone seems to like these days, is baked in as the front end out of the box to a very stock Android set of applications. The usual apps from Google plus Dolby Atmos for ultra, ultra fine control of the audio processing system. You won't believe how much there is to fiddle with here. This is no set and forget. Uh, Cortex, previously Game Booster for picking performance over power save with the default being in the middle sensibly and a theme store, though it's all a bit too gamey in there for my personal use case. And that's it on the apps front, all very restrained. It's as if you had a Google Pixel with Nova Launcher installed. Of course, unlike the Pixels, software updates aren't quite as reliable. 
which is perhaps the only fly in the ointment here. The original Razer phone got stranded on Android 8.1 and July 2018 security. That's over a year ago now. The Razer Phone 2 is still on February 2019 security and it's nearly the end of August. Now Razer has publicly promised Android 9 Pi for the original Razer Phone and one would assume therefore that their software people are therefore alive and well. In which case I'd like to see a more up-to-date security status here pretty please for the Razer Phone 2. All in all though this is an awful lot of phone for £400. At the original price it was a pricey niche play here it is in a truly affordable flagship. Caveats over Razer's update capability notwithstanding. And in my case, something that can at last take over the mantle of best speaker experience in a viable smartphone, as a catchy title, from my beloved but oh so slow and limited Marshall London. The Razer Phone 2.